So what are some things that we can look at? You know, how can we determine whether a plant's habitat grown? It's not something that everyone's familiar with, but here's a really good example of how different two plants can look. So on the left here, we've got a Copiapoa columna alba from habitat. And on the right, we've got one from cultivation. So you can see here very clearly the differences between the two plants. They, they really look nothing alike. And these kind of uh, characteristics are similar for a lot of plants which have been poached from habitat. So you can have um, microorganisms, algae, lichen growing on the spines or on the plant itself, uh, some bleaching of trichomes, uh, thickened farina. So uh, that's the epidermal wax, which you can see on plants. It's uh, usually a lot thicker and a lot harder or a little bit eroded even on habitat plants broken and worn trichomes so often when plants are taken from habitat or transported these um, these types of characteristics are, are damaged uh, as well as the roots as well it's very common for habitat plants to have their roots completely cut off or very badly damaged which is really unlikely um, for a cultivated plant for example so the general checklist for all plants, you know, whether it's a cordex plant, whether it's a succulent, you can look, you know, does it have damaged roots or no roots? Is there damage to the body, uh, leaves or other parts, you know, from any other tools used when it's being extracted? Uh, another really important thing to look at is the clay or like the type of soil. A lot of, a lot of um, soil and habitat is clay. So it's been chemically eroded and it's a very special type of soil, which is not usually associated with cultivation. Uh, yeah, traces of the other kind of microbes in life which uh, live in that habitat. So there are very specific types of lichen and another alga which grow on Copiapoa, for example, and even conophytums and, and other cortex plants which are endemic to that area. So that's a really specific signal that plants come from that habitat. You can always go straight to a site as approved nursery, although that, always, that doesn't always mean whether the plants are actually kind of come from habitat or not but uh, it's always good to check with a community expert if you're unsure. We've got some other examples of uh, some different types of infographics which focus on different, uh, different species, not cacti. So we know that Dudley is being uh, really poached uh, through you know, California, other parts of the United States, down into Mexico. But uh, unfortunately with Dudley, it's, it can be quite difficult to tell if it's, uh, if it's if it's being poached or not. So we've got an example here of a, of a cultivated plant and the habitat plant as well. So um, it can be quite tricky with Dudley's. Uh, something which is much more easier is Dioscoria mexicana. So plants of this general size, you know, if you're seeing them being sold in bulk, uh, it's a pretty high uh, alert that it's actually come from habitat. As, as no cultivated Dioscoria mexicana occur commercially available due to the field collecting. It's very difficult to actually get seed, but uh, some of them are being propagated. So we have an image here from uh, uh, Al Klein from the United States. He's an experienced grower of Dioscoria mexicana. And so after one year, you can see that they're, well, they're the size of a small marble. So they're an incredibly slow growing plant. So you always need to be cautious of really large cortex plants that you see, especially stuff with no roots or stuff that's damaged. Areocarpus, uh, it's another cactus genre that's really heavily poached, but you can see quite clearly here the difference between a cultivated plant and a habitat plant. So that really sort of weathered, dry, corking, damaged tissue is, is pretty much the biggest indicator of a lot of habitat plants. So you can see on the image on the left there, classic uh, areocarpus, which have been taken from habitat. And they really just look nothing like uh, a nice cultivated plant. This is what a typical cultivated plant looks like. Nice uh, nappy form tap roots intact, really green photosynthetic tissue. So what does poaching look like online? Um, I mean, here we have some a lot of copiapoa column the alba which have been taken from habitat they've got all the characteristics which i pointed out before the image on the left there is a classic you know there's just no roots you can see that uh that cork cambium tissue the white farina and if you take a close look the damaged spines and there's a lot of foreign websites uh, especially from asia that look like this where you can see habitat plants obviously in the images really high prices and this is a, a strange uh, genus from Africa, Opocaria, which has uh, actually been really targeted and is really desirable for uh, Asians. So 
there's a lot of these plants appearing uh, overseas and you can see that they they also paint the the, the root stock there or on the base of the plant when they when they transport it as well so that can also be a sign that um that the plants have been poached from habitat so social media seems to have i mean ha poaching has been an issue for, for quite a while but the social media problem uh, has really escalated the situation yeah this is just typically what it looks like on instagram you know and people are posting <laughs> bare rooted plants you know which are obviously from habitat there's, there's not a lot of shame in it at all it's it's quite in your face a lot of the time but the problem is, as you can see, this image of a, a habitat plant that's uh, it's been in cultivation for a while, but it's still got those um, those characteristics. And you can see the comments. You know, it's a real beauty. Wow, I'd like to have one for my collection. It's hard to get this in the U.S. You know, a lot of people liking the post to get shared, and that creates the lust and desire for these types of plants. You know, to have something essentially special. You know, that's come from the desert. And this is what it looks like. This is actually an auction table. This got sent to me from uh, from someone in Japan. Uh, so it, it kind of, it, it resembles uh, like rhino horns and ivory and stuff like that. So these are sort of like really black market kind of deals. And and essentially people go to these kind of places and they can all occur in the same, you know, there's a black market auction essentially where they do have things like ivory and also plants uh, available all at the same venue for people who are, who are sort of, are drawn to that type of thing so you can see really uh old and damaged roots of copiapoa from habitat and there was actually recently something called the operation atacama which uh, rescued some habitat plants from italy and brought them back to chile so this is what it looked like in the chilean media uh, it really caught a lot of people's attention and it was really quite patriotic, I think, to have them sent back to Chile, although there was some complications with that, but they have arrived back in the country. But the thing is, is that it's not, once these things have been taken from habitat, it's almost impossible to put them uh, back into their habitat because they take so long to develop their root systems, which they're really dependent on. They need to have that really well developed to, to survive in habitat. And some of the types of habitats, the the terrain, the geology, the topography is so specific that they just cannot be transplanted into a rock fissure, into a, a grit pan or, or wherever they've come from. And this is actually the Chilean um, uh, investigations team looking into the habitat of, of poached copiapo and what it actually looks like getting familiar with it. So it's good to see that Chile is actually uh, paying attention to the issue. And we've got some more images of uh, Pacopodium rostulatum species, which uh, made their way to Asia. So they've just got the classic appearance, that really weathered type look, uh, no roots or damaged roots. And this is what they look like in typical niche uh, stores in places like Japan and Tokyo. Uh, Stephania, Stephania erecta is another cordyciform plant, which actually comes from Asia, but it's also been highly targeted for poaching. It inhabits a really specific limestone uh, walls so it grows on these limestone climbed walls and here's actually an image you know some images somebody sent to me of uh, people actually poaching these uh, plants from the habitat uh, so they grow in some really kind of wild and quite dangerous locations but people are still going and accessing them and and cutting these cordyciform plants from the, the limestone walls kind of phytums are obviously a really uh, highly poached plant and something which is becoming really endangered, especially certain species in Africa. And this is what a typical kind of phytum plant looks like on, you know, for sale on, on Instagram. Avonia, that's another really highly desirable and slow growing plant, which has been targeted by, by poachers. And you can see a video here, which is posted on, on Instagram. And this video is actually taken in, in Tanzania, I was told. And you can see the large, plants here these are these are these are probably even 100 years old i mean this species from what i know is incredibly slow growing and i've never seen such a big plant like that in cultivation well if you want to know a little bit more about me you can look me up on my website cactusexplorer.com and uh, my contact information is there if you need to contact me directly and a couple of references from the talk